Welcome everyone. Adam the Wu here as the recording of this Monday, June 6th, 2022. If you're wondering what that rattling around in my hand is, this paper, this little flyer for Arches National Park, which I am just a few miles from. My parents and myself will be venturing in with my car. I'll be driving through, paying the admission fee, and going to a place I have never been. See some arches, see some natural beauty, and enjoy the heat. It is a little, little warm, a little toasty today. And I bring this up because you have to have a reservation to get in a timed entry, they call it, to go online, book it, and it's $2. The curious and unusual thing is you cannot pay admission to the national park along with the $2. You have to pay that at the gate. But I paid the two bucks, got my timed entry, and rolling in, I'm inviting you to join me. Look at that waterfall back there in the mountains. A butte. Is that a butte? Or is that a mesa or is it just a mountain? Join me, shall you? And just to make sure I have a full tank of gas before heading in, I don't know how much driving I'm gonna be doing around in there. Needed a little fuel, so stopped at this Maverick where gas is $4 and 84 cents a gallon. Now the reservation we have is for 9 a.m. A little bit of a little bit of traffic here going in. And once you're in, you do not have to leave at an appropriate time. You can stay in there all day till they close at five. So if you have a 9 a.m. reservation, like I got, stay in all day. If you have 11 a.m. reservation, you can still stay till five. Also should note that I first pulled in a few hundred yards back, it said a two hour wait and then another 50 yards up or 100 yards up, it said one hour wait. I'm gonna guess we're probably gonna wait 20 minutes. But if I would've got a reservation later in the day, even with the timed entry, I would've waited a lot longer than getting here early at 9 a.m. And Dad and I were just noticing there is a survey crew over here to the side taking surveys. Just asking people that are leaving, what'd you think of the National Park? We're taking a survey. <laughs> taking a survey right now. Someone, someone just did a U-turn though. I don't think they had a timed reservation. I look at these washboards over here. It says, have your timed entry ticket ready to scan and I need to have my photo ID or and or park pass payment ready. I do not have a park pass, but I do have my photo ID and we'll make the payment to get in. Here it comes. Almost to the front here are the price points because I have a private vehicle. I will be paying $30. If I had a motorcycle, it would be $25. Per person, $15. Okay, there's three of us in here, so is it going to be $45 or is it going to be $30? 30 $30. You're saying $30? Yep. $30. Oh, walk-in and bicycle. Yeah. So if, I was riding, if we were all riding bikes, it would be $45. What if we were having, what if we had a bike rack on the back of our car? What if they would charge us for it? The private vehicle and her bike. All right, that took about 20, 20 minutes or so and gone up this elevation and into the National Park. That's the length of cars. So that was about a 20 minute wait, but the signs that said one or two hour wait, one was about here and the other one was way back here, even with the time entry. That was the way it goes. And then up here, we're gonna be going up this road to see some very iconic rocks. In fact, I'm already seeing some very interesting formations. Just so fascinating. Looking at the guide map for a general layout of the land here, you see the, the red line there. It says the entrance station and just shows all the markings and the landmarks that will be going past all the way up and into arches. The sheer height of these is incredible, just looking at the vehicles below it. And there are lots of different areas you can pull your car off of. Plenty of parking all scattered through that park. And this is referred to as Park Avenue. that rock up there balanced.
Those look like little peas. There's even hiking trails on the bottom there. Amazing. You're wearing a beach bum life shirt. Yep, that's me. Nowhere near the beach. Nope, nowhere. <laughs> I'm gonna let people know I am. <laughs> Give me your thoughts, Dad. We have an amazing creator who made this. Uh, not everybody believes in God, but when I see things like this, I see his hand at work in our world. Unbelievable. This little pull off is known as the LaSalle Mountain Viewpoint. I'm guessing that is the LaSalle Mountains over there. All this terrain is spectacular. This shows some of the names. So you got the Oregon, Tower of Babel, Sheep Rock, and the Gossips, which would be off to the side of this one, right over there. So, no, not the Gossips, three Gossips, Sheep Rock, Tower of Babel, and the Oregon. This is the Oregon and Tower of Babel, right here. I hope we're in the frame. <laughs> if not, it's gonna be awkward. Big the foot view. Get the best get the best view in the whole vehicle. <laughs> now according to this, it says the rise and fall of an arch. So there used to be an arch. Well, it says possible fallen arch was there and possible fallen arch was there referring to this section here yes sheep rock which is located right here that looks kind of like a sheep's head or a sheep yeah the sheep looking that way there possibly was an arch here that had that fell many years ago Now my interpretation would be a cow, but I guess that does look like a sheep. There are a lot of sheep and cows that have that same kind of formation. The face and the body style. Sheep rock. placard there states ancient sand dunes that was like a parade of sorts there was about six or seven cars and then now no cars Feel like you're in an old western? Yeah, I do. Roy Rogers days. Wait for John Wayne to pull up on a stagecoach. Yeah. Get in, Pilgrim. <laughs> yeah. Off at another pull off parking lot area. Walked a few feet up the trail to a spectacular view. All these are spectacular views. And you know how these, you notice how these rocks are balancing on each other. 
Well, that magnitude size-wise is nothing compared to this balancing rock. A huge boulder on top of another rectangular rock formation. And according to the placard on the way in, there used to be another rock off to the side down the hill called Chip Off the Old Block. And it fell over in the 70s, but this one still standing. Action pose. The, it's stay up there, Rock. <laughs> Over time, that's gonna fall off. Yeah, there was another one in the 70s that was next to it that was smaller that fell off. I was reading the information on the way in. You definitely don't want to be around when that falls off. <laughs> An earthquake through here would not be good. But I wanted to just show, see the other people walking around over here, how teeny tiny they are in comparison. This says, you are here. Okay, this is the double arch. As stated right there, double arch. It says, using cleats, micro spikes, or other traction devices suggested on icy and snow pack trails. There is no snow, thankfully. All I have is my tennis shoes on. But that is the double arch. From Indiana Jones on the Last Crusade, how cool is that? Of course you know I gotta throw a movie reference, huh? I mean. And I see a bunch of people up there that look like little ants size ratio wise now from here you can definitely see how the arches are prevalent i'm wondering what it's going to be like climbing up hiking up there up this trail getting a little bit closer what do you think mama i uh, just Wow, <laughs> all I can say. All you can say is wow. <laughs> and we're gonna, go, we're gonna be able to walk right up underneath the arches. Yeah. Some have climbed up there. Into that little cavern, cavernous area. It's kind of echoey over there too. This is about the angle. There's a behind the scenes photo of River Phoenix, kind of about in this area. Seems like a lot of people congregated over here in the shade, which is a good idea. The sun is very, very prominent today. Get out of the elements for a bit. All right, there's the photo of River Phoenix behind the scenes from Indiana Jones on the Last Crusade. Kind of at the bottom of the arches looking up. Pretty dang amazing. I'm underneath the double arches right now away from the sun. The sun's right there, but the arch is blocking it, giving it a little shade. Looking back down at the pathway. Elevated. Okay. I have now made it up to this window looking down. Wow. Not a lot of footing here, but I've kind of, kind of made it work. Oh, I am right here on, I am on the edge. Not the edge of glory, like Lady Gaga sang about, but whatever you, another movie quote, whatever you do, don't look down. Because that last step, first step, is a doozy. There's my torso shadow here, and then there's the long-winded shadow down there waving. Okay, I think that's good enough for this little window look, looking down. I'm gonna go back down. Wow. Now, how do I get down? One last look at the double arch. Heading down the trail back to the parking area. I do wanna walk over, journey over to that window as well, that arch. It's a single arch, not a double one, but off in the distance there's another one or, one or two over there. And I've seen quite a few signs at the parking area about staying hydrated, drinking plenty of water. We bought a case of water, had it in the back seat. It's a good thing, you wanna stay hydrated because it is, you get very dehydrated and thirsty out here. So, can't prepare. The neat thing about this area is you get lots of different viewpoints from driving around the road to different, different areas. And you can see all these formations from different perspectives.
And another quick view there of the icy peaks of those mountains. I'm noticing a lot of the teetering rocks is a theme out here. You see there's another one kind of teetering up there. And then the balancing rock boulder off, off over there from a different perspective. So there's one. And then don't forget about that one. Kind of looks like a, I was going to say a boomerang, but it looks like one of those paper footballs that you would make and you would like hit it with your finger and try to get it through the field goals that the person on the other side of the table is holding. Doesn't it look like that? <laughs> it does. It's paper football rock. Now from this angle, Delicate Arch is way up there. It's about a mile or so hike from a different drop-off point. We opted out of hiking to that one. There is a viewpoint from here. Right there in the center of the stream, Delicate Arch. Zooming. Extreme close-up. Carved in sandstone, this freestanding arch is composed mostly of slick rock member. The top is five thick, five foot thick layer of Moab tongue. 33 feet high? No, 45 feet wide. What? 45 feet high and 33 feet wide. This is the unzoomed end version. It's way up there. It's also given the nickname Cowboy Chaps or Old Maid's Bloomers. Also out here is the Wolf Cabin. John Wesley Wolf and his son Fred settled the banks of Saltwash in 1898. And some of their ranch is still out here, cabin and everything. And just to clarify, it's very toasty. I think it's about 89 degrees and the sun, there's not a lot of clouds blocking the sun. And we have, well, I didn't bring any suntan lotion but I brought a lot of water, so I guess I got one. I got two of the three. But we're in and out of the car, so we're doing okay. Definitely water is a must. The person next to me agreed with me. And the remnants of where the animals were Oh, look at this. It's like something a horse would pull, like part of an old carriage or an old cart of some sort. This is so awesome. Just picture this in a Western with the rock formations back here. Quintessential. Textbook, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Textbook Old West. We got some spider webs, some cobwebs accumulating there on the other side as well. And on to the fiery furnace. Do not go beyond this fence line. And my interpretation, probably why it's called the fiery furnace, is it reminds me, because the reddish hue of a fire and almost looks like flames. And contrary to its name, the fiery furnace is not a hot place. It's named for the warm glow seen on the rocks in late afternoon. The fiery furnace is actually a maze of cool, shady canyons between towering sandstone walls. I was reading on the sign, in order to hike down to this one, you have to have a permit. So evidently those who are down there, they have a permit to hike down there. And this kind of just shows the expansiveness. I mean, all this kind of shows the expansiveness, but just take a look at just how much property and how big this national park is just from this one angle. And I'm just now noticing not only mom has a beach shirt on, 
You have an appropriate beach cap on. Yes, the Daytona Beach. You have the Daytona Beach cap. It's just beach life out here beach in the desert. Life in the desert. And on to Skyline Arch. Go up these stairs. Get the view of Skyline Arch. See a few people are hiking out to it. I don't know if we're going to hike out to this one either. I do want to show the perspective of it from here though. The trailhead and the arch. Often this, does it get, this national park does not get its name because it does not have arches. It certainly does. You definitely see why they're also called windows. Windows to the sky. And this area is known as Devil's Garden. It's kind of a big circle around. I guess, it would be, I guess you could consider this the end of the drivable portion of the park. So we're going to circle around here, Devil's Garden, and head back towards the front. So we saw the Garden of Eden. Now we're seeing the Devil's Garden. Once again, the big the foot cam. It's been about four hours in there. It's now about 1.10, 1.15. Got in about 9.15. You know why the trash cans have these type of... Bears. Because of the bears. Duh yeah. bears. Now there is a sign saying that these might be a little warm because they're made out of metal. Is it hot? No. Oh, this is pretty neat. They're, they even have an arch inside the visitor center. You can walk through the archway here too. So you got the fake rock here, and then outside the window you got the real rock. Take a look at that. That's pretty neat. Got the archway and everything. A lot of people inside the gift shop here and in the visitor center. Yeah, one could say this is a... But it's gonna sting me. I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna say this place is a real beehive of activity. <laughs> yes, we're in the beehive state we are. as well. That goat is goat slash ram is surveying its terrain, and that's gonna do it for today from the national park. Not all of them, but just one in particular, Arches National Park. It was awesome. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.